Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at how to add a sense of depth uh, by using some additional textures, using layer heights, uh, by giving a real sense of scale and height to your maps. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is the map as it stands currently. This is a place that you might quickly find yourself at where you've got a uh, filled in prairie background, you've placed a lake and everything like that. You've used the scatter tool to put trees and bushes all around, and things are looking decently, but there's uh, a little bit that's missing. Uh, one thing that you uh, should definitely take a look doing uh, for your map, depending on where it is, it could be sand, it could be dirt, or it could be a rocky terrain on the outer edge of your lake, but whatever it is, you very rarely have water just leading directly up to grass or to stone or anything like that. So adding a little bit of texture quickly around the outside of your map is super easy. You want to bow out a little bit more where there's uh, outcroppings in the lake and things like that. So we'll come in and add a little bit more there, a little bit more there, pull in everything. And that gives us a nice immediate sense of a little bit of extra texture. And then the other thing that you'll notice is that you've still got your shimmering grass underneath. Now, you could say that that's you know, ripples on the lake or anything like that. But let's go ahead and add a little bit of a different texture under the water so that it doesn't look quite so shimmery, but looks more like what the bottom of a lake might actually look like. And you might wind up with bits and pieces of this coming outside of the lake, but you can always swap back to your sand tool and go in and fill those in. There we go. So now that we've got a little bit of texture for the lake, we've got a little bit of texture for the sand on the outside area and it's starting to look good, let's go ahead and start adding some stuff inside the lake that gives it a little bit of character. So it gives this map a little bit of a story. We're going to come through and we're going to grab the monster bones and your default uh, layer will be user layer one, which is Obviously not what we want because you don't crash land on top of a lake. You crash land into a lake and land there. So now we've got a cool effect where we've got the these monster bones hanging out at the bottom of this lake. Uh, and we're going to go through and add a little bit more character by going to the material brush and swapping over to the cobblestone tile. Now, when this thing crash landed, I like to think that it left a little bit of an imprint beyond just the texture of the lake that it's normally in. So we're going to trace where the monster's wings are and everything like that and add a little bit of this texture. Make sure that you, your layer is still set to a uh, below water. There we go. And once we've got all of that mapped out properly, we can see that there's a little bit of an indentation into the lake additionally uh, where this creature has crash landed. And if it crash landed, there's a good chance that it brought some additional stone or rock down with it when it collapsed. So we can come back to the object tool and we'll use the scatter tool this time and switch over to the nature, bro or the nature tag and select a handful of stones. And we can get all the way down to these like multiple pebble areas and we're going to want to set this to be below water as well. Uh, the scale can be pretty much any size you want for however many rocks you want. We don't want to have too many rocks, so we'll just come through and kind of place these around in a couple different places. There we go. And we don't want to fill up too much of the area uh, because we still want people to see the normal underwater uh, earthen area. And now that we've got that, uh, all this stone that collapsed with the creature has to have come from somewhere. So let's go back to the material brush. And this time we're going to use the rock tile and we're going to build kind of an outcropping that goes above. Now we're still set to uh, below water for a layer. So we're going to want to go up and I would say skip user layer one because that's where your trees and where all of this other stuff got added and if you add it there then these trees will be on the same layer and they might start appearing over your outcropping or under it depending on how you want it. Uh, so actually I mean if you want the trees to be
going over and it's a low cliff or something like that, you can use user layer one and place the trees on user layer two or just use the over under settings when you're placing objects. But we'll go to user layer two because I want this to be a pretty big cliff and we're gonna fill out this area all the way around. So we're gonna just lose some of those trees uh, and then we're gonna outcrop it just a little bit here, add some over here. There we go. And now we've got a cool cliff overhanging where this creature has collapsed. And let's go through and actually add a little bit of grass to it too. That way it's not just all stone. But we can also you know, remove bits and pieces of it just to give it a little bit more texture. Go into a smaller amount here on the edge. And I like to think that maybe it was a famous fighter in the past or something that defeated this thing. So we can come over to the object tool we'll get out of our tags, go back to the full library and find the statues which are in here somewhere. Not just the normal knights. Yeah, here we go. We'll go with this one and we're going to want to come back here and go to at least the layer of the uh, material brush that we placed on so it can appear on top. We'll hold Alt and use the scroll wheel to get it to increase in size. I think a 10 foot by 10 foot statue is probably fitting for our hero. We can turn Snap back on to get it exactly positioned. Click there and all of a sudden we've got a pretty good texture and different levels to the map where players can come through and your description of below the water, you see broken stones, you see bones creeping up through uh, through the dirt of the lake and you look above and you see a statue that's overhanging or overhanging the area uh, of a gallant knight with a, a clasped sword or something like that. Uh, whatever it is, you can change this up uh, to match your own desire a little bit. Uh, but it should give you an idea of how you can use layers, different material brushes, different objects and things like that to hopefully get a little bit more depth in your map and a little bit more character and help the map itself tell a story even before uh, you start describing anything. Uh, be sure to check back for any more tips or tricks or anything like that. Uh, I hope this has helped.